Welcome back once again, dear Legion, to Cataclysm Dark Days Ahead and to our short survival series, where we are continuing the Hunted Challenge. In the last, we didn't even get the chance to meet our hunter. Our poor, unfortunate clown met his end at the hands of the hungering dead. In the tradition of theatre, comedy and tragedy, the two things go hand in hand. And perhaps it was the perfect death for one of the theatrical arts. But our next survivor in this challenge is of a different temperament. Now the interesting thing about the hunted scenario is that it picks from a massive pool of potential professions. And so when I say we are getting a random character here, they are most certainly random. And our next survivor is about as far away from our clown as we can get. Let's please say hello to the 37 year old Houston Lux Downs, a combat medic. Yes, Houston, or Lux as we're gonna be calling him, was a combat medic before the cataclysm and during it. He and his squad were deployed to the small town of Lenius. It is there over the last few days that they have slowly and purposefully being picked off one by one. And now Lux is the last of them. Alone, and with no answer from his radio, he must find a way to survive. And so let's get to know Lux a little bit here. He's 170 centimeters tall and carrying a little bit of that extra weight that all characters do when we start. His strength and intelligence are high and his perception highest of all. Looking at his skills here, he does have a little bit of melee skill, unarmed combat skill, and he also has skill with piercing weapons. We can't see it here, but one of his hobbies before, while well, the end of the world, was knife throwing. So that's an opportunity, and we can see that here reflected in his range skills. He has marksmanship of two and a throwing of three. He does have a basic understanding of rifles as well, with that sitting at two. In terms of crafting, we don't have any skills there, but under interaction, he has an athletics of two and a healthcare understanding of four. Because yeah, because yes, he is a combat medic. And swapping over to have a look at those traits now, we can see that he's rocking some green eyes, a soul patch, purple medium length hair. <laughs> an interesting choice for one in the military. But you know what, Lux? Go you. He also has a light brown tone. Now his first and only positive trait is his heat tolerance, meaning that Lux fares far better in warmer climates and is less bothered by hotter temperatures, but burns hurt just as much as usual. And now onto the negatives, a bad temper. Things just keep Lux down. In general, he tends to be unhappy and it takes some doing to cheer him up. So crafting might be a problem down the line as when you're not motivated to do something in Cataclysm, you're not going to do it. And then finally, yes, of course, he is hunted. Since the start of the Cataclysm, something has been hunting Lux relentlessly. He can outrun it, but it will always find him eventually. And just like our clown, the only escape is for one of them to die. Yeah. Oh, then I suppose this could also be seen as a positive trait. He has the trait MD. And with that, let's head over to the proficiencies and we can see some of the things he's been able to pick up in his time as a combat medic. First of all, we have burn care, which given what's following us, fire may very well be an option. We then have human autopsies. That also means that Lux is desensitized to the sight of a human's innards. He can dissect human corpses without a penalty, which again is good because of his bad temper. Anything that does get him down is gonna get him down more. He also has a good understanding of physiology, meaning he has a in-depth understanding of how humans and animals operate. He might be able to pick out critical points on bodies that he can actually target. He understands the principles of biology, spotting and awareness, wound curing, and he is actually considered an expert in wound care, which, hey, that's great. And then finally, hearkening back to those melee skills we talked about earlier, Lux knows Kung Fu and is a student of the snake, one of the five 
Shaolin animal styles, the snake focuses on sinuous movement and precision strikes. Perception determines your accuracy and damage rather than dexterity and strength. Standing still increases accuracy and critical hits for his next few attacks. So something that we will indeed want to be utilizing. Now, now we get to the situation, the place that we start in, and I'll be honest, I'm slightly concerned. We're in an enclosure, an enclosure at a zoo. So, this is the town, potentially small town, potentially big town of Linnaeus. We have a river to our northwest, and it looks like the edge of the town over here to the west. It could continue on for a long ways, but yeah, we're at a great big zoo here, and we're next to a regional school, no doubt filled with horrific zombified children. Having a look around the rest of the map here, we have some storage units, a private park, a military surplus, which is more than likely going to be completely trashed. We also have an apartment tower over here, a coffee shop, a butcher's shop, a bookstore, and there could be some other things that I'm missing as well, because sometimes these, yeah, like an abandoned storefront. I suppose it's almost always worthwhile having a look at some of these markers on the map. And you know what? It has actually been advised to me that we might want to try and use a different tile set for our map here, which could make it easier in general to understand what we are looking at around here. Oh, we got, we've got a cave here by the river. But yeah, I'm going to have a little bit of a cycle through here and we'll see if we can land on something that works. So having a look at our options here, it does seem that Lawick is the new default. So we are going to go with that. Let's have a look. Okay. All right. It is, uh, <laughs> it is very basic. Yet we can get a bit of an understanding of what it is we're looking at. Red, we know, oh, like that's a gun store up here. And there is another gun store right there. We would have potentially missed those things otherwise. And you know what? While it is basic, I think it does give us an understanding of what is around us probably better than what we'd have otherwise. Like we are more than likely going to assume that this is a double story house at the very least. So for the time being, that's what we'll stick with. Okay. All right. Let's have a look at our inventory now. We, we got some static grounds. Well, that's great. We got an M4 carbine strapped to our chest. I think we got a chance here. We got bandages, we got morphine, we have aspirin, antibiotics, antiseptic, heartburn medicine. We even have a camo dust mask here and some earplugs, which I will try to remember to use. And you know what? Right away, I'm going to go to these earplugs here and we're going to mark them as E, just so that they're easy to hit A, activate E to put them in, um, or wear E. Yeah. And our combat knife here, I am going to give that K for knife rather than C for combat. We'll see if that works. We have the scalpel, so we're going to be able to take up our bodies and potentially understand how we can target those weak points on them. But yeah, I am liking all the equipment that we've got here. The ballistics vest as well is looking really good. But here's my concern. We are in an enclosure in the zoo, and there is a chance that this door is just completely locked. This is also reinforced glass. This just might be soft locked. And I... I I gotta really hope that that's not the case here. Okay, what's that beneath us? A rock. Right. So, no doubt Lux rushed in here to get away from whatever he had hunting him. With all the hay that's here as well, this has been a safe place to sleep for a while. Oh, thank you. The gods, the cataclysm, <laughs> have not doomed us. We are okay for now. But something that we do need to keep into account is that zoos will have infected people and more importantly infected animals within them. We do have zoo parking out here to the east. There is a potential for us to get a vehicle here and to be able to get some space away from the town. We are being hunted, of course, but that's not new for anyone playing Cataclysm. When we are playing Cataclysm, everything is hunting us. So if we can limit the amount of things that are coming for us, we'll be looking better off. Okay, well, do I want to really open each of these doors here? Probably not. The fact that that reinforced glass is completely smashed there, that's not a good sign. It means whatever was in here was strong enough to break through what many zombies can't. I'm going to say that most of these are going to be enclosures here, and we probably don't want to open them up. Okay, we can open that door, a locked door that leads to the outside of this building. We're just gonna close it up 
aware that we can get out that way. We can see a few bits of equipment in here that aren't going to be immediately useful to us. The detergent might be though. Do we want to take that or just straight up soap? Let's just have a look at the volume and the weight that it's taking up and just see which is going to be better for us. The soap is a lot smaller, so I'm going to take that for now. The detergent might be better, but the reason why I want that is that if we find any unique equipment on a zombie, we're going to want to make sure that we get that washed because again, our morale is going to be plummeting throughout this game. We've got some codeine here as well. We don't have any yet, so we're going to take some just so we can have a mixture of different painkillers. Um, some medical scissors, some medical gloves. I imagine that we probably would have them in our IFAC pouch. We're just going to try and open that up so we can see exactly what it is that we have inside there. And indeed, we do already have some medical scissors, so not a concern for us. I imagine a lot of the equipment that we're finding here belongs to vets. All right. Well, I think because we're on the inside, we are able to unlock these doors. And once they're unlocked, they seemingly are going to stay that way. We've got a chipmunk here behind one of the enclosure windows. A rattlesnake, a bobcat. I'm still trying to imagine what might have smashed out of there. We don't see anything right now. That's okay. What do we have around here? A flyer maybe? So, so awesome monthly. There are some projects, crocheting, knitting and whatnot. It's very small, it's very low volume. I'm gonna take it. I am also concerned that we are now hearing something right by where that smashed uh, enclosure is. So we're gonna try and just like make our way away from that for now. Um, and we can see a zombie and we can see a zombie cop. And I'm imagining that we are seeing them on the outside here. Yes, we are. They can't see us yet. And I think as long as we kind of try and stay to the darkness here, we should be relatively unseen. Looks like we might have like an employee lounge back here, possibly. We do have some food in here. Okay, and a wristwatch. Well, we've already got a watch, as we can tell what the time is at the moment. Yes, wristwatch on our left wrist. However, we're still going to want to try and make our way towards this. We'll just slip in here and we'll see what is available to us. Okay, so it's mostly going to be snack foods by the look of it. This, I think, is actually a, a gift shop, quite possibly. There's a lot of board games in here. Oh, I mean, it could be an employee lounge still. Either way, we can try and pick up some food here. We're already hearing activity on the outside. So let's go for the meat jerky, the pork sticks and some chocolate bars just to potentially improve our mood down the line if it gets really bad. Just a camisole over here. And I don't think we're gonna to wanna to take much else from here. In terms of equipment, we're already looking really good. And you know what? Oh, before we forget, let's mark our weapon as G. G for gun. <laughs> And yeah, we aren't going to leave this zoo just yet. We're going to see what else we can find here. And I think if it comes to it, I want to try and see how we can fight at the moment. Um, our torso is a little over encumbered at the moment. I think that's probably because the rifle, the how we have it set up. Let's just have a look and see. Yeah, that does seem to be the case. Also, we're going to try and swap our sheath so that it's on a different leg. We'll do that first. And then it looks like we're going to have to try and shuffle our carbine around so heading on over to our sheath we are going to mark the sheath as s and now let's just go and change side so we're now wearing it on our other leg it's not going to be conflicting with the water uh, that we have uh, we are going to need a little bit of light here so i think we should be safe in this spot we are going to have to wield our carbine for a moment and we're going to have to try and activate it to remove the strap that is on there there we go all right, and now going over towards where that strap is, should be under clothing, I believe. Indeed it is. We are going to activate it so that we can adjust it. Now we can wear our rifle on our front. And yeah, going back to it again, we're going to activate it and we're going to apply it to our carbine. And now we can wear our carbine on our front and we're not going to have the same problems that we did before. We still have 28 torso encumbrance, but that's low considering the amount that we are wearing. Yeah. <laughs> I would love to make some throwing knives so that we might be able to utilize them. But I also, I really do want to try out the snake kung fu. We know how to heal ourselves, so that's good. <laughs> um, I feel a little bit more confident about walking around here. Ooh, that's a moose. 
<laughs> I feel a little less confident. Um, mooses can be bad news. We can also potentially scare them away just by shouting. Okay, well, hey, hey, look at you. One of the moose are out and the other one is behind bars. All right, let's keep it that way for now. Open up our doors and you know what, we'll close both of them just so that nothing follows us in here. Looks like this might have been a little bit of an eating space. And let's see what they've got back here. An advanced electronic cigarette that could potentially improve our mood down the line. So we're gonna take it just in case. And we're just gonna see what is around us at the moment. Ooh, we got some cab sav. I mean, yeah, we'll take it. And we're mostly seeing fast food, food here. There are just some straight up meat sandwiches. Still completely good to go. Let's grab them. And I'm tempted to just eat the cheesy fries that are in the fridge right now. Not good for our health though, so maybe not. Oh, and good, look at that. The chocolate bars aren't actually bad for us. In small amounts. That's how we'll eat them. Um, we're actually just gonna snack on the mozzarella that's in the fridge, just so that we can have a little bit of an intake. And we're also going to drink the clean water that is in there as well, just so that we don't have to touch our canteen yet. Food places, delicious food, TM. I'm sure it is delicious. It's good in terms of calories. Hmm, how long do you last? Shelf life indefinite? Okay, I mean, I haven't seen food places, delicious food before. Sure. I'm, I imagine it's completely safe for us to do that. Okay, we do have a steak knife here. Um, in terms of butchery, we've got a scalpel. We do have a combat knife, which will have butchery of some kind. It has a butchering quality of 19. So if we are wanting to try and butcher things, can be good to hold onto another knife. But realistically, the amount of food that we have around us right now, I don't think we're going to be doing much of that kind of gathering. That's usually that's something that comes much later in Cataclysm. So we won't worry about it just yet. We will grab this matchbook, however, because I don't think, yeah, we had any other means of starting a fire. Three matches in there. We will take it. Ah, uh, yes. And a frying pan. I'm going to take the cast iron over the steel frying pan, just because it's going to be good for us to have a tool that we can cook things in and potentially boil bandages down the line. A pot would do the same for us as well, but a pan isn't going to weigh us down all that much. We are going to continue our exploration of this place and we can see bats and crows and other winged creatures in here. So zoos can be a pretty safe space, but they can also be terrible because once things start dying here, they start coming back as, well, other things. Otters, adorable. Oh dear, and see, here we go. This is what I was kind of alluding to here, and we can already see perhaps one of the culprits, a festering boar, a zombified omnivore descended from the wild boar. It's now got black goo all over it instead of mud. And we can see these bodies all over here, all of these festering boars and pigs. So obviously one of them had turned and started to go for the others. And this looks like it might have been the petting zoo because it's just sheep and, and, and pigs and yeah, little rabbits that are still trying to flee. I think this is a good opportunity for us to see how, uh, how useful our melee is going to be. Um, we're going to grab this matchbook again and... I'm tempted to give our man as much of a chance as possible, so we're going to have a look at dropping his backpack. I don't know whether or not it's going to remember if we give it a designation. We're just going to be dropping it anyway. Okay, and um, here we go. We swiftly jab the festering boar for five damage. Minor bleeding, not bad. Now we know that as we are standing still, we get bonuses. Um, so we can see these effects over here. One, we're unhappy. We're not content with our life. We're gonna see if we can change that. We also have snake's sight here. You're patient and you know where to hit your opponent for best results. Accuracy increased by 25% of perception, but decreased by 25% of dexterity. Okay. Bash damage increased by 75%, but decreased by 75% of strength. So I wonder if we'd want to have a lower dexterity or strength here. I'm not sure if I'm reading that correctly or not. Then of course we have snake's bite. Armor penetration increased by 25% of perception. Last two turns and stacks four times. So, we hold still here, jabbing the festering boar yet again for a critical four damage. It's not a lot of damage, 
but it's okay. We dodged to the side there, and having a look at our dodge, our dodge is 4.7 at the moment. We probably want to try and see if we can train that up a little bit, but I do think that, yeah, standing completely still right now is the best thing for us to do. A little bit of a bite on our left arm. That's okay. And there we go. The festering boar dies. And we actually damaged our tactical gloves a little bit there because of how hard we were punching. We will keep that in mind. I think it's still worth us having gloves on. Um, we might just end up completely damaging those. Let's get this backpack back on. And I think we are going to go through here and make sure that the rest of the bodies that are in this pen here uh, wait, you might be attacked. Oh, there's a... Okay. Moose spotted. I ignore. It's okay. Uh, there was a rabbit in the corner there that I, I, I didn't realize. Okay. As long as the moose just stays over there doing moose things, that's fine by me. Let's just check and see what we have here in the corner. Bird food and cattle fodder. I'm tempted to take at least one thing of cattle fodder. Um... Because we can, we can tame creatures, I don't know whether or not we can tame a moose. I'm unsure about that, and mmm, I, mmm. <laughs> okay, one thing that I'm going to do is we're going to use one of our bandages, and we're just going to wrap it around our left arm. We can see that it's going to be great, because we are a combat medic. Um, yeah, as much as I would like to get into trying to tame a moose, um, we've got maple syrup as well. <laughs> um... I think it might be better for us to try and focus, let's say, on our dodge skill. So this area here seems to be relatively safe. These might be bathrooms. I think we should probably clear them before we do any kind of training. Yeah, that sound sounds like it's coming from the outside. Yeah, okay. So we're going to take a moment here to try and see if we can practice some of our abilities. We are going to have many recipes that we are now aware of. So I'm going to go through as it is ritual, and just make sure that we mark all of them as seen. Okay, so we can see all the things that we can practice here, and we can't really do much to get it any better. Our dodge skill, just as it is, is already three, so we're not gonna be getting that better right now. Our athletics is already pretty high, so for us to get that higher, we would need actual exercise equipment, which we don't have access to here. But we might be able to find that in other places. So, I think we got to get out of this place. Yeah. There's no real point in us staying here for any longer than we need to. Across the road from us is a gun store. A gun store that we could definitely make use of. I mean, there's two gun stores here. I'm also looking at this river over here and I'm wondering if there is a way that we might be able to utilize that. A way that we might be able to slow down our pursuer so that we can take them out. But I think we're also going to need just a very large amount of damage to be able to try and take out our pursuer. And I reckon fire is definitely going to help with that. Oh, this is a strip mall over here. Hmm. And we do, it. We do have a fitness gym. Okay, so we could do a little bit of practice there. A hunting supply store and a police station. Ooh. The sporting goods store here is, is good as well. All of that is useful. I believe we did also have the military surplus. Yeah, so that's that one there. Don't know if it's going to be intact. And already we have pretty good military equipment. So I think our route from here is going to be making our way out towards the parking lot, seeing if we can clear it all. Now look, if we weren't being pursued, my advice to any player in this position would be wait until nightfall. Wait until the sun has set and then go out. But I don't know how much time we have here. As soon as our pursuer is on us, it's kind of already too late. So we got to get out of the zoo. And we know that there is a way out this way. I'm also intrigued by that route up here. Wouldn't mind seeing if there's anything else interesting going on in the zoo. But now I'm having second thoughts. As there is a black bear in there. That is what smashed through the glass there. And it's still just a living black bear. Neat. We're not going to be able to tame that sucker. And uh, yeah, I, I don't know whether or not you can tame moose in <laughs> in Cataclysm. Um, yeah. Hmm. Um, okay. We have cattle fodder. And um, we need to be right next to it though. This is This is the problem here. And if I open this gate, it might just start attacking us. I'm just going to wait to see if it stands 
if it makes its way through the gate here. Otherwise, we're going to step through. Okay, here we go. I'm going to give it a shot. Cattle fodder? Moose. The moose doesn't want that kind of food. So we're going to run back through here as quickly as possible. <laughs> That's fair. We can't tame moose. This must be one of these rare flesh-eating mooses. You know, it, it, it was worth a shot. We do have some deer over here as well. Now, if there was a cow that was still alive here, we could tame the cow. I don't think we're going to tame the coyotes, no. And yeah, they're not going to have a horse just chilling in the zoo. So, I think it's time to get out of here. Um, I am tempted to check and see what else we've got down here. Oh no, it's going to be a moose, right? Because we definitely remembered seeing a moose around here. So, let's not deal with that oh boy but it does look like we might need to deal with the dead and let's just have a look and see what we're dealing with here and oh boy it's a lot it is a lot and we can see over here the windows they're marked oh it has a small sticker in one corner reading protected by atmo web leading an ai in terminating crime so this could potentially call security if it were to be smashed. Uh, and we could potentially smash that from a distance with our rifle. May maybe, maybe. But we have a large amount of dead that are coming straight towards us. Um, and there ain't much we can do about that other than maybe try and head back inside and find another way out of the zoo. The front door might not be the right door in this instance. Um, this glass can get shattered quite easily though. Oh, it is reinforced. It will survive at least a little bit of damage. So I think we're going to have to go the other route. We're going to have to try and see if we can find a way around that black bear. We're going to close that behind us. And that black bear should leave us alone. There we go. We're okay. Ignore the rattlesnake. And let's just make our way out the back here. Oh boy. Well, we just saw something then. It is a tough zombie. Okay, so do we want to try and go toe to toe with a tough zombie? Probably not the smartest idea we've ever had. Yeah, don't know how I feel about that one. We've got a rifle. But the problem is as soon as we start using that rifle, we're going to have a whole lot of heat on top of us. So we'd have to move quite quickly. I don't think we've got much of a choice in this scenario. I think we've got to go for it. So we are going to run back here. We are going to wield that rifle of ours. We see the tough zombie round the corner and we get ready. We are going to be taking a shot. We are just going to do a single shot here if we can. And I'm going to try and see if we can steady it up as much as we can before it gets too close. I want precise and we got it. We hear whack. We hit the tree. We hit the bloody tree. Okay. Well, that's that. We steady up yet again. I want precise and we get it. Okay, 54 damage, heavy arterial bleeding. We could try and leave it to bleed out here. But like I said, we have limited time. The fact that we've shot this gun now, there is going to be a lot coming for us right away. So I want to try and see if we can get another one of these shots. Okay, that's good enough. We're going to run back and it's going to bleed out. There it is. Okay, now the fat zombie, I would be a little bit more okay with us just trying to fight it with our hands. We're going to move towards this. We can smash it in time, only just. Did it have anything that we can make use of? Not really. Okay. I'm tempted to try and see if we can get away with um, throwing the combat knife. It's not a throwing knife, but we'll see. We're going to activate our sheath, draw our combat knife, and we're going to try and see if we can throw it towards that fat zombie there. Okay. Yeah, it embeds in it for 19 damage. So we should be able to get that knife back afterwards. It's bleeding badly. I'm going to see if we can drop this backpack in time. We can. Okay. All right. Oh boy, what's the point in fighting? See, that's not good. It's something else that we have to concern ourselves with. We're damaging these gloves more and more. We are getting some pretty all right damage. Oh, okay. But it does get a rip in there. Tearing our boxer shorts as it hits into us. That was just blunt concussive force there. There we go. The zombie is dead and we've seen another. Stop smashing. Yes. Okay, it's rounding the corner. The combat knife is there. We're going to try and see if we can wield that in time. There we go. We got it. So, it starts rounding the corner. We're going to throw the combat knife. 19 damage. That's good. And, you know, part of me is thinking, maybe... Okay. 
all right, that's a feral cop. We don't even have a sprite for that yet. Rounding the corner, another of the crazed humans among the dead, this police officer angrily mutters to themselves, wandering about with a truncheon in hand in search of someone to brutalize. <sighs> Situation's getting worse. Situation is getting worse. I think we're gonna have to go back to the rifle here. I don't like the idea of fighting. Well, it's just a regular police officer, right? It's not a riot cop or anything like that. We hear Fweet. The cop blows their whistle. You serious? Yep. Okay. Well, we start swiftly jabbing the zombie in front of us. They're badly bleeding. We're being grabbed. Okay. Yep. We need to get out. But the problem is our backpack is on the ground there. Now are we willing to give that up? Well, I think we've got to break the grab. We start to back away. Let's get that rifle out. Okay. We get it out, but they get close. We haven't been grabbed yet. Let's see if we can get to the store. Yep, we're going to need to. We're gonna try and bring them into the darkness here. We're gonna stop running. And we're just gonna back up. I'm gonna try and see if we can get an all right shot on this cop as it stumbles towards us. Okay, 39 damage, heavy arterial bleeding. We're gonna try and see if we can run with that. It's gonna keep on blowing that horn, isn't it? All this noise is also going to draw the black bear towards it. I think we're just going to have to expend the bullet. As much as I don't want to, we're going to have to. Ignore the shuffling. Heavy arterial, and it should be closer to death now. So yet again, we start to get further away. We're going to slow to a walk now. Check in on its health. It's still pretty bad. Come on, drop. There we go. All right. You did have a Kevlar vest on that we might be able to make use of. It would make us rather unhappy. You do have a riot helmet as well. Shouldn't be better than our army helmet. Your sidearm is spent and you have a little bit of a flashlight. The baton is not a bad weapon and I wouldn't mind trying to grab that. I think we're going to grab this whistle though because that can still be a useful tool for us. And oh yeah, we aren't going to fit that on us right now. We could just grab the belt and wear it, but it's also filthy. Not a great plan for us right this second. I think if we can deal with the dead that we've drawn to us so far, we'll be okay. We could also potentially do a little bit of a, a runabout here. I stopped at the store with the intention of making our way through the broken glass here. And I think that's probably the right call for us to make right now. So I'm gonna try and see if we can very quickly shuffle some of the things across from this body. So we wanna try and take that duty belt and the Kevlar vest. I'm just gonna close that door. And now we are okay. Believe it or not, we're okay. And we're actually gonna wait in this position and we're gonna catch our breath. We can hear them on the other side there. Okay, am I all right with us being a little bit unhappy? Let's chuck on the Kevlar vest. Let's put on the duty belt. And wearing filthy gear is going to affect us. It's not just yet, but it will affect us. We can see that the Kevlar vest is conflicting with the combat shirt. We're gonna take that combat shirt off in favor of the Kevlar vest. Actually, you know what? This stuff isn't filthy. Because they're not a zombie yet. They're not a zombie yet. Ha. Okay. Yeah, so the Kevlar vest is definitely going to be better than our combat shirt. But we can't store the stuff that's in the shirt anywhere else. We need to get back to our backpack before anything else. So, let's start to make our way around here. If we could try and lure them to the black bear, that would be a good option. But I'm thinking that most of them have gone up the top here and around now. So let's just start to make our way down here. We're going to peek around the corner. Okay, we don't immediately see zombies there. So that's good. We're going to peek yet again. They can probably see us there. Oh boy. Yeah, that's, uh, that sure is a bad situation to find ourselves in. Ah. Uh... <laughs> oh, Cataclysm, how I love thee. Um, okay, so. If stuff's gotten bad fast here and we don't have a lot of time. Oh, but we managed to get the runner in one. That might have saved our life. That might have saved our life. And now this is when, yeah, we're gonna use it. We're gonna use the bear. Okay, come on, children. Follow me, follow Lux. 
We're going to start to make our way up here, moving into the darkness. Uh, we're going to blow our whistle. We're going to get their attention. And um, I hate to do this to you, Black Bear. Hey, Black Bear, come on. Come on. Okay, well, we're going to go back up this way. There might be dead out here. We need to be ready for that. There isn't. That's okay. Um, just think if they have anything else that we want to try and use. I mean, the holster, yeah. We'll see if we can get away with wearing that as well. It might conflict. Uh, it is. What is it conflicting with? It's conflicting with the canteen. So, yeah, and the sheath we've got on our right leg. Yeah, we don't need it. Yeah, it's good to have a sidearm, but we don't need to have that right now. Okay. So, we're right back where we started. We're going to smash this corpse, though, just to make sure that... Well, we're safe. Uh, the ammo pouch is something that we should be able to use, maybe? Oh, we already have one on the other leg. Well, it's the lower leg, so I'm hoping that we should be able to just say, uh, change side. Yeah, so it's on our right leg now, and it is not conflicting. Okay, that's good. So at least we do have an extra Stanic magazine with us at the moment. Uh, what we can do here is we can open this door to the outside, and I think that's probably going to be the right call. We're just going to peek. Okay, it's safe out that way. We can leave. But not until we get our backpack. We can hear some activity. I also want to get our bloody knife back, you know? Okay, that tree is blocking line of sight, which is great. We're just going to peek again. My god. My god. Really? Guys, come in this way. Come in this way. <laughs> okay, we're going to have to do a little bit more work here. Oh, the black bear has done work. Good. Good. Okay, we're going to activate that whistle again. Come on, follow the noise. Dummies, follow the noise. There we go. So we just need that kid to lose sight of us. We're just going to keep on moving. Uh, yeah, we could try and fight hand to hand here. Oh boy. I just want to peek around this way because they, they can't see us down this way, but we can see them. If we start shooting our gun, they are going to be aware of us. They're just milling around there at the moment. Frustrating as it is. Hmm. <laughs> okay, um, we need to see if that kid's still there. So we're just gonna wait here. We're gonna see if we can hear shuffling. Well, we can. The kid's, the kid's still there. All right, we're gonna have to deal with the kid. Um, so we're actually just gonna drop the carbine for now. We don't need to worry about dropping our backpack because it's already dropped. There it is. Okay, torso encumbrance is really thrown off balance here. It's still a little bit on the high side. It's lower than if we had the backpack. There we go. We got it. We're going to move that body out the doorway. We're going to smash the remains and we'll see if it had anything. It had a tiny little suit on. Horrifying. Grabbing our carbine. Make sure that we're not leaving anything. There's just the holster there. Okay. All right. So, uh, we do have a dead body there. Oh, is that the bear? Is that the bear? It is the bear. All right. The bear option is not going to freaking work. Um, so, I guess we need to make a choice now. How important is that backpack to us? Well, no, we we can still make this work. We just need to be smart with how we lure them to us. And um, we are gonna have to really try to lure them to us. So we're gonna need a bit of noise. There's two of them down there. Okay, they were nearly aware of us again. Um, we're just gonna have to get ready to run and we're gonna have to run really fast. So blow the whistle, blow the whistle again. Okay, that's got their attention. And the thing is, they are going to see the animals in the enclosures. They are going to be attracted to those animals. Let's blow that whistle again. We want to try and see if we can get as many as possible in here. And then away. Oh, wow. Wow, wow, wow. We were really slow there. We were slowed down perhaps by the bodies, trying to traverse that ground. Well, I guess this is it now. Going back in there is going to be trouble. I need to know if we have a possibility of getting that backpack back. We do. It's not easy though. I don't think we can get that backpack on before they all descend on us. So, we need to get away. Alright, we've got a vehicle that's ahead of us. We don't know the condition of it. We have our rifle slung over our shoulder at the moment. Uh, the seats are completely destroyed, so we're not going to be driving away in that. This is quite a wreck. The wheels are completely destroyed, but houses can be a good escape for us. It's just a question of how we try and use them. So, let's start to move. We need to be cautious whenever we are trying to move like this. 
because the second that we start going diagonal, it's slower. So we want to be trying to move in those cardinal directions as much as possible. I am seeing a staircase ahead of us, and I think that's what we're going to go towards. Yep. We're just going to start to make our way towards it. My gosh. That gunshot drew so many dead to us. All of them just waiting on the outskirts of the wall there. With no pack to our name, <laughs> we make our ways away from the zoo. Not in the direction that we wanted to go, but in the direction that we need to go. I'm just trying to see if there are any ferals following us, and there doesn't appear to be yet. So, we're going to take the staircase, and okay, we have an inn. We have an inn to a home, and we can see down from where we're at. And now, <laughs> with the most recent updates, we can actually just straight up see down, and we can see what is beneath us. Wonderful. Magnificent. And Lux, well, buddy, you are still alive for now. And let's try and keep it that way. You've survived one more episode than our clown friend did. Yet, a very important resource, his backpack, with all those medical supplies and everything else, is still back there at the zoo. It's the morning, 8.35 a.m. And you know what? Our hunter didn't come for our clown by the end of his episode, but, you know, he wasn't that far in the day either, was he? But do know, the hunter is out there. And for now, we are the hunted. The prey. Lux, good luck to you. I, I feel like you're going to need it. And Legionnaires, I would like to thank you for joining me for yet another episode here in Cataclysm. Here in this rather frightening challenge we have ahead of us. For now, I would like to thank you all for joining me. And if you enjoyed today's episode, please consider leaving a comment or a like to let me know if you enjoyed the show. As for now, I have been Rykon. You have all been awesome. And until next time, stay tuned.